Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Long Overdue podcast. Um, this week I'm joined by a wonderful, wonderful guy, and I can't stress that enough, uh, Jamie Yates, who is a personal trainer and a model. I've known Jamie for a long time now, we've collaborated on a lot of um, personal projects of mine. Um, he has a history of boxing, and we've created a beautiful film a while back about his... Um, feelings around boxing and what boxing's given him as a person, particularly for his mental health. Um, in this conversation, we touch on boxing again and what boxing's given him as a man and how it's allowed him to kind of process issues that he's dealt with over his time. Um, we touch on just social media and how social media can affect men and how they perceive their own bodies. And it's interesting to talk to Jamie about that as a personal trainer um, because Jamie, from the outset, you know, he's got a fucking great body. Like he's a personal trainer, it's his job to be in shape. But it's interesting to talk to people like that to understand that, you know, even people who are in the best shape of their lives, it's a job to be in, you know, good shape. And um, they have issues, they have their own hang ups. And it's interesting just to explore how social media can affect people like that, as well as how there is crossover between personal trainers and everyone else when it comes to um personal hang ups and issues with their own body. Um, so it's a beautiful conversation. It's an interesting conversation. Um, listen, enjoy. Um, unfortunately, at the end of the podcast, we did have some technical issues, so it does finish short. But again, it does detract from the beauty of the conversation. So as always, like, comment, share, and let me know what you think. When I was a kid, I always knew growing up, even though I had no interest in it at the time, me, mum and dad wanted me to go to a boxing gym just because my dad had done it when he was younger. And, you know, he, he says it helped him out a lot and, you know, the discipline, the fitness side of things. And he was like, I think it'd always, always do me good. So right from being a little kid, I knew that I would go into a boxing gym one day. And then, you know, the time came, I think I was, I was nine. Yeah, it was just a couple of weeks after my ninth birthday, actually. And my mum took us down to the local boxing gym and... I was totally out of shape. Like I was a very overweight child, and I think people. You, I think a lot of people say this, but we're not talking like puppy fat. We're talking. I was nine years old, and I think I weighed eleven stone for a nine-year-old boy. That's four foot tall. You know, like very small, compact. Loved me food. Very, very unhealthy. A happy kid though. Like you know, very happy young lad. But just was was on the big side. So I got took to the boxing gym. And the the incentive was when I first went, it was kind of like, right, you go in here, you know, to like lose weight, get a little bit healthy. You don't have to actually like the boxing if, you know, you, we don't want you to box, but you're just going to go there, do the training, that's good for you. So off I went and five nights a week, you know, every day after school, I would be at the boxing gym and I just loved it, like straight away. Um, It was nothing that I'd ever like experienced before, you know, being so young. I think the closest thing when you're a kid to fitness is like a PE lesson. And when you look at PE lessons in this country, it's kind of just when you're that young, it's football and egg and spoon races and stuff like that. So Aye, or like it was for me, rugby, which being you yeah, know, five mate. stone wet, didn't put me on a rugby pitch. Like, I know, mate, I just, you know, and I couldn't run for fucking toffee at the time. So like none of that was, you know, it was all out of the question. But um, I found something that I really enjoyed and I liked the company of everyone there. There was a lot of young lads around my age and older. And that was just totally something that I'd never experienced before either. You know, I was used to hanging around with kids my age and then to be put into a boxing gym where, you know, you're in the same class is because the beginner classes are kind of all age groups. There's not a kid's class and an adult class. It's just beginners and then like, you know, novices and intermediaries and stuff like that. So... Everyone, it was ranging from, I think there was kids as young as me, eight, nine, up to 18-year-old lads. And everyone talks to each other. And when I say that, I mean, like, the 18-year-old will talk to you and you'll be involved in the same conversation that he would be in with another 18-year-old type thing because you're only really talking about, you know, if you're doing drills or if there's like a circuit or something that you've got to do, you're sort of kind of like, right, okay, well, we need to do X, Y, and Z. And then everyone's, you know, you ask how, you know, what do you do outside of this? Like some lads are working. And then for me, it was like, oh, well, I'm still in school. I'm only nine and, you know, all this kind of thing. 
So yeah, mate. I, just... I think within sport as well, it's one of those things that <clears throat> people. I say, like, again, from an outsider's perspective, particularly in, like, combat sports, yep. you know, you can kind of assume that, um, you know, and I might be stereotyping or I might just kind of be totally wrong when I say this, but I think, like, sometimes you get people who think, like, oh, I want to do a combat sport because, you know, yeah. I just want to get, like, strong myself, want to be able to look after myself, that kind yeah. of feeling of, like, you know, I've got that power within me. But then, you know, you kind of don't realise the community aspect of that you know going and doing like combat sport isn't just yeah. a place where everyone goes to learn how to level seven shades of shit out of someone it's you exactly. know it's it's a community it's an escape it's a place where people to kind of crack on and learn it, and it teach is. one another and it's just like oh mate it's just so funny like the crack like in any anything where everyone's having fun the crack is going to be fantastic and like, I've had some of the funniest moments, like, laugh out loud moments in my life, which I even remember now, right, from being, like, a little kid all the way up to now. Like, even hearing daft little things like jokes, like, one-liners, and just, oh, mate, it's fantastic. The community aspect of it's amazing. I've still got friends now that I've known since I was, like, 11, 12, that I still see out and about, and I'll chat away to them. One of my best friends now, um, I've known him since I must have been about 14, 15, so that's 10 years, and... Like I say, he's one of my closest friends. Met him in a boxing gym. So it's great for the community building. And it's great just for that confidence building. Like you say, you you learn how to talk to people of all age groups because that's all that's there. You're not, it's not like a classroom when you're a kid and there's a certain type of conversation that's going on. And you, you're with kids, teenagers, adults. And you do have to make conversation with them, obviously. And you learn great people skills all the way throughout. Mate. Even if you're not bothered about learning the skill of like boxing or or even particularly you know any combat sport i would recommend going into a gym environment in which there's like a mixed bag of individuals there because yeah i was gonna you... say as well because that must must be interesting in a sense because when you talk about the different age ranges that you kind of like worked with within you know being a part of a, like a boxing yeah. gym that i can only <clears> reflect on me going to a running club but I yep. was kind of put in a space where you're just kind of with people that are your age. Yeah. And um, you, you kind of don't have that interpersonal connection with people of different age groups who are kind of like doing the same same training, Yeah. you know, doing similar things. And you don't have that, I don't know, like that different age range of like you can learn from someone who's older, you can learn from someone who's yeah. younger. Like people can hold each other accountable for like, conversations mm -hmm. they might have i don't know like you just there's, there's a lot more of like an amalgamation it seems from there is the it's, people you could interact with mm -hmm. it's fantastic mate and my first coaches um were two cuban coaches that got brought to the uk um to train out of a boxing gym that was in newbiggin hall at the time it was um it was a, just a school gym that had been taken over by a boxer from a pr called glenn mccrory i think he was a world champion i can't remember what weight class um, and he had got basically permission from the Cuban government to bring two coaches to England. I think it was on like maybe a three or four month, six month potentially basis. And then they would go home for a couple of weeks for a few years. And the, they were my first coaches. So not only was it right from young age, you know, getting to know people of all different age groups. It was people from different backgrounds and cultures and stuff like that. Like, um, And that does shape you a lot. Like, I still remember the conversations that I would have with one of my coaches, Alberto. He was called Alberto Perez. And he loved like his salsa dancing and all sorts, mate. He was a fantastic man. Very, very effeminate man, but super macho as well at the same time. You know, that kind of like Cuban flair about him. He was a cool dude. Yeah. Really there back. And like, I'll still find photos, mate, like lying around or in photo albums or on DVDs. We've got loads of photos from digital cameras on DVDs from the years. And we'll pop them in sometimes. And I'm like, oh, fucking hell, yeah, there's, there's Alberto. And there was the other coach from Cuba. And oh, it's, it's amazing. But yeah, you're learning to talk to all these different people, mate, about so many different subjects. You get mature very quickly. Yeah. And what um <clears throat> up till now, like what would you say, like what's like boxing given you? Or like what's some of like the biggest lessons that you've kind of learned from, you know, being a part of that community? I would say never judge a book by its cover, for sure, because I've met some like really, really scary looking people, mate, like in boxing gyms, as you can as you can imagine. And they're nothing, mate, but the biggest, biggest, kindest heart. 
like, and that's a, that is a genuine fact. I've met blokes that could be mistaken as gorillas <laughs> and <laughs> they are wonderful human beings, mate. Really, really canny, really, really nice. And then it can go both ways as well. Like you get exposed, you know, like say if you go into different boxing gyms to spar and stuff, there might be like a really, I don't know, like a really thin, wiry lad. And you're like, oh, I wonder, you know, he doesn't look very strong or very big. And then you watch him spar and he could just be putting everyone on the ass. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I hear we're way bigger than him, so it is like a very oh wow, well, this is this is mental. You unlearn everything that media teaches you. Yeah. You know that Hollywood would and, teach you. Oh, you know, like everyone's gonna look like jacked or yeah, you know, everyone's got if they in, in box and they're gonna. I mean, again, just look at the new film Creed that's come out. Like you know, oh, um, the third oh, film no. that's been trailered. And like, I mean, heavyweights are different. Well, actually, not really, because look at Tyson Fury. But yeah, like, you look exactly at Creed right. and like, yeah, and like Michael B. Jordan in it, and he's pure like pecs out here. Like, it looks like he's got tits and like his like, arms are massive, like the size of his thighs. And you're like, I know, mate. It's I, like, like, I'm not being funny, but like, that's not like you have heavyweights now. Like, mate, then don't all look like that. <laughs> no, nah, mate, you could. I think if he walked into a boxing gym, people would be like, fucking what? Like, they'd look at him like, who's he? He's huge. Yeah. But like, none of them look like that. It's like, this is the Hollywood effect as well. It's, totally unrealistic totally totally unrealistic and it's it, that can't be a healthy well i know for a fact that it's not a healthy thing that they're doing stuff like that in movies especially when one of the greatest heavyweights of this generation is tyson fury and look at how he looks do you know what i mean yeah and that's so, the difference like you look at someone like aj and then you you look at him i know and i think on paper everyone you know if they're not into boxing i mean i'm not like the biggest like boxing nerd in the world but like you'd look at aj and tyson yep. fury and you'd be like well aj is gonna you know level him exactly <laughs> like on, on and, and you just kind of like reality of it it's like not the slightest it's insane <laughs> and it's like it's dead weird whenever i watch like fury fight because of how he looks and he makes it look so effortless and he's obviously he's in amazing shape internally but externally to look at you know he just doesn't look fit whatsoever and you watch him and whenever he wins i'm so happy for him but i'm also in the back of my head i'm like Oh, I'm just so disappointed. I go to the gym for nothing. Like, <laughs> like this has no bearing on actual performance at all. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just it's insane. Like you love it, but at the same time, I'm like, oh my god, that's just so alien to see. Speaking of like the kind of like unhealthy nature of it all, like, do you ever get caught up in, um, like the perceptions of like social media and like what kind of body you feel like you should have oh yeah mate all the time i think um especially with me being like a personal trainer as well as like model you're exposed to things from kind of like all sides so especially for me like my algorithm knows me it knows what i'm interested in so everything it's either modeling related or personal training related or fitness related and when you put when you mash those two things together you're getting a lot of jacked people on your timeline and on your explore page mm. and my girlfriend worded this to me really really well about tiktok and it was you can go on tiktok as a girl this is like a very i would say this is a good mirrored example you could go on tiktok as a girl and within half an hour of scrolling if your algorithm is showing you pretty girls you can see some of the most beautiful people that your grandparents would have seen in their entire lifetime but you're seeing yeah. it in like half an hour because we've got access to this whole world feed of good looking people or people that are using filters and maybe not being the most truthful pumping things out yeah. so i'm aware even though i say all of these things like these really ripped people or whatever and I'm, i know for a fine fact that's not you know they're not walking around like that every single day and it's not sustainable, and it's all this. It tricks you into thinking it is because you're getting bombarded with so much imagery of it. Whereas uh, these and I images... think like, oh, sorry, you go on. No, because I was going to say it's, it's interesting that you talk like that as well because it's um, like I find that even within like because a lot of the work I do is like around mental health. Yeah, <clears throat> and like even if you were to follow the hashtag male mental health, and you were to kind of go through all the photos of like people who were using that. Yep. like you get loads of like topless blokes just using that like generic hashtag male mental health Aye, but kind of like portraying like portraying like i don't know like like that, that you know i have a good body 
therefore my mental health is, is going to be better. Yeah. And exactly. you know, that, that, that's just, that's, that's just not the case. But like, even, you know, like, I don't think people kind of realize like how maybe hard it is from a male perspective to kind of get away from that mindset of, but if yeah. I have a good body, like I'm going to, everything's fine. You know, internally I'm going to become better. Cause I mean, physically, like, it, I mean, now and again, depends on like how your mental health works and like what you need to kind of feed it to get better. But yeah. like, you know, being physically fit is nice. It is a good feeling. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that again is not necessarily going to be like the be all and end all of like, you know, oh, what, what, once I look like, you know, once I've got a six pack, like that's going to be all my worries just yeah. done and dusted. <laughs> it's insane, mate. I think loads of people do think like that as well. But it's like, it's fitness is such a greedy thing. You can get to that amazing shape that you had in your brain, you know, when you first started training. And when you get to that, your brain's so used to being exposed to the next great thing that you don't even appreciate what you've got and then you want the next great thing and i say it all the time on tiktok and i hear it from my clients and online clients and all sorts and other people's clients too they'll get to a certain point which they would have been happy at even six months ago but their perception of what is now amazing has changed because they've seen something else so they've seen like the, a new Mr. Olympia or whatever, and he's in like the best shape any human's ever been in. And now that's the gold standard for them. And I'm like, but hang on a minute, you didn't see that six months ago. And six months ago, you were happy. Yeah. And you're actually better. Like the goalpost keeps changing. Yeah, I'm like, you're a lot better than when you started. You, you've you surpassed your goal in terms of how you wanted to look and feel. But now all of a sudden, it's not enough because there's always a marginal extra thing that you can achieve. And it's just such an unhealthy way of looking at things. But as mm. humans, I think we do have a tendency to do that. And in this like society, I don't think I'm not a you know, I'm not a communist or anything like that, but in a totally <laughs> capitalist consumer society, which is all that we know, the next big thing is so often encouraged. And then it seeps even into your own self worth and self image. Oh, I I absolutely completely agree. I completely like I think um I mean e- even now like I-, I I battle with myself and kind of you know I, I keep a-, a reasonably good shape yep and it's one of those where like I enjoy being fit like I- I've done it since I was younger and it's kind of ingrained in me to kind of just keep up a certain level of fitness yep um but at the same time I do quite often particularly when I'm working out, um, because, I mean, Christ, you go to a gym, even in your own room, there's all, you, yep. you, you're never, you know, far away from a mirror. Nah, you're not. And it's that kind of, like, thing where, like, you, you can't help but just, like, look at yourself, particularly when you've got that, like, gym pump on. Yeah. And you're naturally looking bigger than what you do on, like, a regular basis, and you're like, fuck it, yeah, this is, like, look at that yeah, and all of this, and, like, you're tensing your arms, and then, like, you wake up the next day, and you look at yourself in the mirror, and you're a different shape because like you, you don't have that blood pump anymore and you kind of think yep. you beat yourself up because you're like well why don't I, like why aren't I absolutely like why aren't I popping this morning like where's oh. all the abs and like the the, oh, the, the vascular you know veins gone and all that I'm the exact same mate like you know what I'm like I'm very partial with post workout gym pick I fucking <laughs> took some earlier on man like <laughs> terrible for it and I'm exactly the same mate you'll see yourself looking like a certain way like bigger and you're like, oh, that's fucking amazing. And then the next day, you know, you might have, the, or even later on in the day, you might have that same T-shirt on that you had on. But because it's expanded, because, you know, your blood's pumped, your muscles have, you know, expanded, it's stretched the fucking sleeves of the T-shirt. And then by the time you go back to normal, it's that little bit looser. And it plays such mental havoc with you, mate. And you're like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm <laughs> that thin, really. And it's not even that, mate. It's just little tricks like that. It's awful. It's such a pit. It's uh, and and it's and it's hard to kind of you know get out of that headspace because I don't think there's a lot out there for guys to kind of un because I see a lot of chatter about how you know helping women learn to like love themselves and like yeah. love your body and like get used to like where your roles are like yeah your, your skin and all of this but there's 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 none of that for men and it's kind of I think personally I kind of think like well. Like I, I don't I don't know what like normal is or what normal feels like. Like there, there isn't really much conversation with regard to like how other men feel and you know, yeah. like particularly like if I was to sit down and like I always have like a bit of a thing with like my lower 
um like ab area which i think yeah. is like a big generic thing for a lot of people that like yeah. you just have that natural little like podge yeah you and do. i'll often sit down and just think like you know what i mean like i, I feel like a bag of shite sometimes but then you just kind of like, like uh, and it's... i'll grab it and i'm like i didn't really have much to kind of like grab you know what i mean i'm not pulling chunks off myself but Bag, like i but still think like, Ugh, that yeah. looks unsightly <laughs> it's mental mate but I, it's crazy as well so this is something i realized as well because i've always thought that and then i've met some lads through modeling that like do not have that at all but when you see them like stood up walking around kind of thing you do think in your head you're like they don't look very well and mm. then it might be like two minutes later, you might be on set and everyone's got the tops off in between, like, you know, takes or whatever. And you're kind of like sat down having a cup of coffee and it's just mate, like shredded. And you just think like, fucking hell, you don't actually look, looks great on photos. But in real life, I'm like, oh, you do look very, it doesn't look impressive or mm. healthy. Whereas the lads at Austin yeah. Town and maybe do have that podge or whatever, it looks good. And you're like, fucking hell, you actually, you look healthy and happy and smiley and and it does look better but i know that's not like people's yeah. personal preferences as well but it is something that every lad and um, i know women struggle with it as well is that like lower lower ab region they're holding a little bit more weight but when it's gone it can pull the weight from everywhere else as well so your face can go really gaunt your shoulders it's just well it's that thing as well like you know if you say you get people who do go to that extreme and you know have taken that time to figure out well how do I work myself up to the point where I can kind of get rid of that and like kind of like go the yeah. extra mile and it's that thing where like you know it's achievable you can do it yeah but at the same time there's a cost to that you know what I mean like you don't know what these guys are putting themselves through yeah to get themselves into like that shape like what they're sacrificing yeah what they're risking to kind of go to that nth degree but again yeah. with social media when you're reflecting you you know wake up one day you see somebody looking like that and it just takes that one thought to think well i want to look like that but then actually it's kind of like but do you know what it has taken for that person to get there you know what i mean how is how yeah. is their social life being sacrificed how is their yep. you know do they enjoy eating meals you know like what what are they eating on a regular basis like it might be no. boring and shit like... it will be mate nine times out of ten like it is and it will be you know for these people and they might take a photo where they appear to have the dream body that they want and the dark truth behind it is they probably feel exactly the same as everybody else there'll be something that they're chasing as well I don't think anyone's ever completely content in how they look. So what I say to people is you might as well just be not necessarily, you know, I, I always think, you know, you you want to achieve something that you wanted to have to begin with. Mm -hmm. But once you get that, if you then start going even further and stripping more weight off and more weight off, you're not going to feel any different. You're going to look different, but the way your brain works, the way your brain works, you're not going to feel any different. You're going to feel just as, oh, well, there's something more. I'm like, so you might as well, once you get there, think about it for a long fucking time. Maintain that physique, which you can do healthily and sensibly. Maintain that for as long as you can. Because your mm. brain, you might actually change. You might say, you know what? Now I really like how this looks. I'm glad I didn't, you know, starve myself or have to go on a treadmill five days a week for half an hour a day you know just to get that extra little bit because it takes a lot that extra little percentage you know where you see people that are in really good shape and then you see people that look a little bit like freakishly in good shape it's not worth the yeah. it's not worth that effort as it's i mean it's a slog and like i think it's interesting to kind of think back to like those moments where you started really taking notice of like your physique. Like I always used to hate people calling me skinny. Uh, I never wanted to be. I always wanted to be muscular and I wanted to be yeah. bigger. Like I wanted to look like an ape. Uh, um, and I used to, I, I used to want to just like push away from like being skinny. Like I, I was on like creatine. I was uh, eating like chicken, broccoli, and all of this. And like again, it was one of those things where I was like, I'm not really like invested that much in like getting away from like in like doing this properly yeah but it's still you know, it was just kind of the fact that i went through that process to be like well this this is the things i need to do to kind of try and not look skinny yeah and it's... it was just kind of a bit like oh like i can't be arsed but like i don't want to be called thin <laughs> yeah oh mate it's horrible like as a man i know exactly what you mean there's a 
there is a pressure and it's kind of like an unwritten rule that you have to have to be a masculine bloke you have to have like a certain amount of size on you or whatever or you got to at least be like broad and all this stuff and it's that whole word of skinny can cause so much fucking lack of confidence in people that it's scary like my dad was exactly the same when he was younger my dad was like a very slight guy like slim really really slender and someone one day called him skinny not even like as an insult just like generally i don't know if it was a compliment or whatever but it's stuck in his head for ages and it was after that he was like just smashing weights eating all this like horrible stuff to try and get calories down i remember when i was little and he would be in the bedroom like fucking shoulder pressing like a crazy amount of weight just in the bedroom and he's like work trousers and stuff and i was like what the <laughs> fuck like what happened <laughs> you know like yeah 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 what, what's happened in this day for you to just all of a sudden be like fuck this <laughs> I, and i'm like one person said one comment and it just flips your brain and it's exactly the same for me one lad said one comment and it flipped my brain and i was like well what do i do now and it like kicks you into a do certain you, action do you um at the minute like do you feel like you're at a point where you feel comfortable with like who you are physically and, oh like, yeah y- your body yeah but i've been trained for a long time as well and it's like it's took a long time just to get to that it's took like six or seven years which is a f- stupid amount of time just to be like oh well i'm happy now i'm comfortable do you know what i mean and i'm sure there's people that have trained less and feel just as comfortable and there might be people that have been training longer that still don't feel happy but i can say now I, i'm i'm pleased with how i look i'm pleased with how i feel and how i fit my clothes and stuff like that you know like and and how I live my social life, I, you know, I eat out a lot and I, I can kind of like go out and have a meal and not really worry about what was in it or I can order a takeaway and be like, oh, well, it's fine. I'm, you know, it's not going to end the world. Um, So I'm not like anal to the point where I'm micromanaging everything to like maintain my physique, but I'm just happy with how it looks. Yeah, because I think it's important to kind of ask people like yourself that who like are into fitness, it's part of their lifestyle. Because, yep. you know, you could you could look at you from an outsider's perspective and be like, well, of course he's going to be fucking happy with his body. Like, look at him. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, he's but people cut some... fucking, he, he's jacked, he's ripped. But it's kind of like, you know, it's, you, you, you know, as mentioned before, like, people who are, you know, fit as fiddles probably still have hang-ups. And, you know, oh, it's interesting to kind of know, like, what your journey's been like in regard to, like, getting to that point where you can say, no, like, I feel comfortable in, in, in like, my body, even if I am, you know, I've yeah. got a good physique. Yeah, mate, it's it's mental. And I remember, like, in school, when I was, like, 16, there was a proper thing, and it was, like, it was when, like, on Tumblr and stuff, it was, like, people started learning the word jawline. And I was, like, that was the first time I was exposed to that kind of thing, and everyone's, like, fuck it hell. Everyone's, like, rocking about with photos of Brad Pitt on Tumblr and all this, and it's, like, 16-year-old kids, who the fuck's got a jawline at 16? Do you know what I mean? If you did, it's not healthy. You're not finished developing, mate. I've... I've like, I'm a 24-year-old man now. And I'd like to say now, like, all right, okay, I think my face is, like, fully, you know, finished developing, like, the bones have finished setting and everything. And you're getting 16-year-olds that were, like, sharing photos of, like, all these movie stars with these, like, super handsome faces. And it's, like, fucking now, oh, you need to chew chewing gum for, like, X amount of time a day. I remember that was the thing that me and my pals always used to think, like, oh, Christ, you know, I get that masculine, like, face. It's just fucking genetics, mate. It's just, these are grown ass men. Of course they have more defined faces. They've got no fucking puppy fat. They're, you know, they're adults. Yeah, yeah. And like, that's... <laughs> and just... I feel like <clears throat> stuff like that goes full circle. Yeah. And I think it goes full circle because we still don't have those conversations. Like, I've, I've even seen on TikTok that, like, there's, um like this trend going around for like guys like again trying to get like a defined jaw jawline i think it's called like mewing or something i've seen it mate M- m-e-w yeah um but it's kind of like yeah and whether whether or not it works like i don't know i've not done like research it yeah. but i just kind of think it's pretty unhealthy though that like you see some of these videos and yeah. they've got x amount of like you know hundreds of thousands of likes loads of people commenting and it's kind of like you know like trying to like chase like a definition of like oh i need to have a chiseled jawline if i'm going to be attractive it's nuts mate it's not one thing i do like about tiktok now that i've noticed is i don't know if it's just my algorithm but i get a lot of body like body positivity as well so like i'll see 
obviously, like I said earlier on Instagram, I get a lot of like personal trainer content and stuff. And all the personal trainer, like, you know, the content videos are always doing workouts and they've like got the shirts off and it's like looking really jacked and lean. But some of them now, mate, it's guys that aren't as jacked and lean. They might still be in good shape, but they're also doing the same. And like, you know, they've got the t-shirts off, but there's a little bit more natural, like, look to them. There's no, these aren't ripped guys. These are guys where people might say, oh, you know, they're holding like a little bit more weight. And they look amazing. Looks fantastic. Yeah. Because they're just confident, mate. And I think confidence can totally, totally alter how, not only how you perceive your physique, but how other people can as well. And that's also like that mindset of like going in to fitness and like kind of having a healthy goal going in. Like, right, I want to get fit because of this. You know, I want to get fit for me. I want to feel better about myself. I want to kind of just you know, like get my my mind and my body right versus yeah. I think at times I've went into wanting to be fit because I've just wanted to feel attractive in myself, but not yeah. so much for me, but for how people perceive me. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's, a, mate, it's such a huge factor. I couldn't tell you the amount of clients that came to me because they want to look better for a partner or they've just went through a breakup. And so... I think maybe they want to look better if they're being honest with themselves for the dating pool. And it's such a big motivator is what the opposite sex or the, or the, you know, whoever you're sexually attracted to thinks of you or what you think they could think of you. It's such a, it's such a huge thing when it comes to our body image and whether or not people want to admit that, I think it's probably the biggest motivator in terms of exercise for most people. Definitely. Like definitely. Whether, yeah, I mean, I, it's a it's a hard it's a hard space to kind of like get out of because yeah. I think it's whether it's a natural thing where you just naturally want to look good, you want to feel like you've got a great body, but at the yeah. same time, I don't know if you're like, again only from my perspective where it's like I can only get so big, like I kind of know what my, what my yeah physique's like, what my genetics are like. Yeah, you know what I mean, like I am naturally like slimmer than what I want to be. Yep, but I'm at peace with that. Yeah, but, you know. Yeah. If I'm then kind of like going into the dating pool and thinking, oh, but like everyone seems to like jack lads, so like I need to kind of start up with my game. It's a bit like, well, that's just going to like cause me to go insane because I, <laughs> I don't want to put in that effort. I... <laughs> oh, There's two types of kind of like, um, what should we call it? Like procrastination, I would say. And one of them, I would say, is like the genuine type where you are really feeling like shit and going to the gym ain't going to help you that day. If anything, it's going to just throw you off even more. But then there's just the kind where you're like, oh, well, I'm just a little bit tired. And you know in your head that you really want to go, but you're like, I'll just give it a miss. And I say to my clients, I'm like, it's about, it's like a who wants it more kind of thing when it comes to, you know, getting in better shape and all that. I'm like, but if you are feeling like shit, like depressed, down, maybe if, you know, if it's an outlier of a day, give the fucking gym a miss. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to end your progress. But if you're just feeling like a little bit like, oh, I just can't be asked. But I know when I'm there, I'll enjoy it. Go, go then. You know what kind of mm. thing you're going through. You know, like when you're having these conversations with yourself. Like the other day, I, I I gave myself a little bit of, I was like, oh, you fucking, you know, useless bastard. I got a work email. I hadn't trained all day. I had all day to train. And I said to myself, I'm going to give it until about five o'clock tonight and then I'll do it. And I got a work email at 5 p.m. saying, right, you need it in Liverpool tomorrow morning at 9.30. Um you will put you up in a hotel tonight if you, you know, get it all sorted, blah, blah. So I was like, shit, my train's in two hours now. Like, had work, which I never had, you know, like two hours before. Yeah. And I was like, I can't train. I was like, I've genuinely not got any time. And I was like, and the reason was, I just said, I can't be asked to do it right now. <laughs> so I was like, it wasn't that I was in, you know, like a dark place that day. Or I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to give it a miss. It was just, it was a genuine, like, laziness thing. Yeah. So even I... <laughs> Is a personal trainer will suffer from that because it's uh-huh. human. And there's times where you will just be like, oh, well, I'll put it off, I'll put it off, I'll put it off, and then the opportunity's gone, and you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> and that's it. It's human. And, you know, it's, yeah. it's, I don't know, it's why it, it kind of made me feel good knowing that, like, you as a personal trainer also have days like that. Yeah, all the time. You know, you can get in that headspace when you think, well, I bet he's not having a rest day. I bet he's not oh, mate, going to mate, bed early. I bet he's exactly. not having a takeaway. <laughs> mate, I like, I, I love him, but he can fuck right off sometimes. It's, you know, David Goggins. 
Uh-huh. Like, he's fantastic, mate. It's motivating. But at the same time, I just think, oh, fuck you, mate. Like, you don't know me. Like, Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's up, like, what, six in the morning going on a bloody, like, 20k run going, like, like, who's going to get the boats? I know. I'm like, mate, I'll fucking, you're going to get the boats and I'm going to stay in bed. Like, (laughs) yeah, you do. I'm I'm happy being here. (laughs) It's like, go out there and have a great day. And I'm like, don't fucking tell me what to do. I'll have a shit one if I want. (laughs) Like, yeah, mate, people like that, I love them. But at the same time, you just think, oh, shut up, man. Like, I think the best thing people can do is just be honest, mate. I think it's so refreshing when people do just say like you know people that are in good shape or like you would expect to be super disciplined where like they do just have a fuck it day and they're like i'm gonna just sweat cod and play modern warfare all night and i'm not moving because that's all i want to do today and i'm like good for you like that's Mm. healthy that's healthy as well (laughs) and like like and like do you do you like remember like again just talking about like getting comfortable like with your physique um because I, I, I just I knew I wanted to ask this before, but like it wasn't the time to do it. But um, like, do you remember like a certain period or a certain time or moment where you just kind of felt like I'm yeah, like I'm more comfortable now? And like, yeah. you know, how did you like get to that point? Like, what got you there? So for me, it was about it was definitely it was three years ago now. It was like the year before lockdown. Um. I just started, I I went through like a bit of a rut with exercise and I'd kind of, I was on and off with it. And um, I just said to myself, I was like, just give yourself six months. Just like, you know, do your routine. You know what you like to do. Give yourself six months of it. Try not to miss any sessions. Here we go. Technical issues are afoot. I'm trying to keep my cool, realising something's occurred. Let lean in. Hold on, Jamie, your, uh, your sound's oh. gone. Internally, I'm dying inside. Trying to keep my calm because podcast host, professional, you know, got to keep it real. <laughs> well, can, you, can you hear me still? Trying to make light of the situation, you, you know. Just said there, I can't hear Again, any of it. <laughs> keep, the, keep it light, keep it One jovial, sec. act like it nothing serious is happening. But it is. it is, it is. The podcast ain't recording anymore. We've gone offline. We're off piste. We're off the books right now. I'm panicking. I've gone. 